When you connect a capacitor across an alternating voltage generator, we saw in a previous video that the current in the circuit leads the voltage by a phase angle of pi by two, 90 degrees. This basically means that the current oscillations are a quarter of a cycle ahead of the voltage oscillations. In this video, we're gonna dig deeper and figure out why does that happen? Logically, we've seen, you know, mathematically, we've seen in the previous video why it happens, but logically, why is that happening? And also we'll be able to answer questions like, why is it that at, you know, there are points where voltage is zero, but the currents are maximum. And there are points where currents are zero, but voltages are maximum. <laughs> Does that make any sense? All right, so where do we begin? Well, we can begin by reminding ourselves that the voltage across generator should always equal the voltage across the capacitor. In fact, this is how you start the derivation for the current. And we saw that in the previous video to, to derive the expression for the current. And why is this true? Well, that's because, you know, this poten the, point, the potential at this point should be the same as the potential at this point. There are no circuit elements in between. And potential at this point should be the same as potential at this point. Therefore, the voltage here should be the same as the voltage over there. Why does that matter? Why should I care about this? That's because this means as the generator voltage changes, the capacitor voltage should immediately adjust itself. It should follow the generator voltage. But how do you change the capacitor voltage? Well, the capacitor voltage depends on the charge of the capacitor. More charge, more voltage. Less charge, less voltage. Ooh, that means to change the voltage of the capacitor, you need to change the charge. But how do you change the charge? By running a current. Therefore, can you see, to change the voltage, you need to first run a current. And therefore, the current must lead the voltage. Does that make sense? This kind of helps me uh, digest this fact that in a capacitor, the current must first, you know, current must lead the voltage because it's the current that charges the capacitor, which in turn changes its voltage. All right, with this insight, let's dig a deeper and see exactly why we get this graph. So let's look at the voltage over here. Let's consider Let's say right now I just close the circuit and the voltage is zero and it's starting to rise. Now, if the voltage is starting to rise, the capacitor says, hey, I need my voltage to rise, okay, immediately. That means the capacitor needs to get charged so current should start running immediately. But here's the thing, um, how much current should run? That depends upon how quickly the voltage should rise. If the voltage should rise very quickly, the capacitor says, charge me up very quickly. If the voltage should rise very slowly, the capacitor says, charge me up slowly, okay? <laughs> so at this point, the question is, how is the voltage rising? Is it rising very quickly or is it rising very slowly? And for that, you can look at the slope of this curve. You can see it is very steep. If you think of this as a mountain, a very steep mountain, and therefore the voltage is rising very quickly. And so the capacitor says, hey, my voltage should rise very quickly, charge me up very quickly. And therefore, at, the, at this point, you get a very high current because you need to have the quickest charging over there. And that's why this point represents the fastest charging of the capacitor because its voltage is changing very quickly. And therefore you have the maximum current. So th think about it, even though the voltage is very low, it's changing very quickly. That's why you need a very high current. Does that make sense? And notice the current has already reached maximum. <laughs> voltage is yet to reach maximum. Current leads the voltage. All right, now what happens as time passes by? As time passes by, notice the generator voltage keeps increasing, becomes larger and larger and larger. Capacitor says, hey, keep, ch keep charging me, keep charging me, <laughs> okay? But look at how the voltage is increasing. The voltage is increasing very fast here, but it slows down. The increase slows down. Look at the slope. It slows down, slows down, slows down, slows down. The slope becomes, it becomes flatter and flatter. And therefore the capacitor says, hey, keep charging me, but slow that charging down. Slow that charging down. And if you slow the charging down, the current reduces. That's why from here to here, as the voltage increases, the current reduces. So this represents the part where the capacitor's charging rate slows down. Eventually we reach a point where the voltage has reached the maximum and it's not gonna increase anymore. At that point, the capacitor's uh, voltage also reaches maximum and the capacitor says, hey, I don't need any more charging. I mean, I, I reached the maximum value. The voltage is not gonna increase anymore. And therefore, the current at that point becomes zero. Does that make sense? 
And that's why at that point, when the voltage is maximum acro uh, uh, across the capacitor, the capacitor is max charge, capacitor doesn't need any more charging, the current stops. And again, notice the current has already reached zero. The generator voltage is yet to reach the zero, so current leads the voltage. Okay, what happens after that? After that, notice the generator voltage starts reducing. Okay, it goes down. And so the capacitor says, hey, my voltage should also reduce. How, how can I reduce my voltage? Ooh, get rid of my charge. Get rid of, ooh, discharge. How do you discharge? Run the current in the opposite direction. Negative current. That's why after this point you get a negative current. Even though the voltage is positive, because the voltage is reducing, the capacitor voltage needs to reduce, you need to discharge. That's why the current has become negative. Is that making sense now? And also notice, initially the voltage reduces very slowly, very slowly. And then the voltage starts reducing very quickly. How do I see that? Look at the slope. Initially, it's, it's not that steep, but it becomes steeper and steeper and steeper. So the capacitor says, hey, discharge me slowly, slowly, but then as time passes by, quickly discharge me, quick discharge. And so the discharge rate keeps increasing. That's why the current is negative and keeps increasing. So this is the point which represents, this region represents the discharge rate becomes faster and faster and faster. And as a result, the current becomes higher and higher and higher. And eventually, as you keep discharging faster and faster and faster, we reach a point where the capacitor finally loses all its voltage. When the generator voltage has become zero, capacitor at that same time loses all its voltage, all the charge is gone. And immediately, as you can see, the, uh, the generator now starts going in the negative. The capacitor also says, don't stop that current. Keep that current running because I want to now get charged in the opposite direction because the voltage is becoming negative. The capacitor voltage should also become negative. So immediately it says, continue that current. Continue that current, charge me up in the opposite direction. And it's for that reason at this point, you see voltage is zero, but because the voltage will quickly rise in the opposite direction, the current becomes maximum. You now see, same thing as over here, quickest charging, but in the opposite direction. And then as time passes by, notice the voltage keeps on increasing in the opposite direction, but it increases slower and slower. And so the capacitor says, keep charging me in the opposite direction, keep doing that, but slow it down, slow it down, so that my voltage also already increases slower and slower. And that's why the current starts becoming lower and lower and eventually the current goes to zero and this represents where the capacitor has maximum charge in the opposite direction. And then the story continues. So this is how I really love to think about capacitors and what's going on inside. And uh, what I absolutely love about this is we can actually go one step further and, and ask more questions. Like for example, what would happen if I were to increase the frequency of this generator? without changing the maximum voltage. So uh, think of it as the voltage oscillation becomes faster, okay? But the maximum voltage stays the same. What changes will we find in the current? Well, of course, uh, one thing is that the current will also oscillate faster, but I want you to think about the maximum current. Do you think that would change? Why would it change or why would it not change? Uh, you can argue from the same, you know, you can use the same logic without having to look at the equations to try and answer this question. So can you pause and think about this? All right, so let me get rid of these points first for a second. And uh, let me lo let's look at the, what the new voltage graph is gonna look like. Since the voltage is oscillating very quickly, but between the same two points, the voltage graph will be quicker like this. And so it's kind of gonna like, like shrink like this. Does that make sense? So this is the new voltage graph, same height as before, but higher frequency. Okay. So one immediate thing you can see is at this point, the point where you get the maximum current because the capacitor needs to charge very quickly. Notice if you make your voltage oscillate quicker, the slope increases. It goes to, it, 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 it increases, the, the voltage increases even more rapidly at the beginning compared to before. And as a result, now when I turn on my generator, at that point the capacitor says, hey, I need to get charged even faster than before because the voltage is increasing even quicker than before. Which means the current that runs in the circuit now has to be higher than before. 
And as a result of that, you will now find that the maximum current in the circuit is much higher than before. Does that make sense? Mainly because the voltage is changing very quickly, so the capacitor must charge and discharge very quickly. That means the current in the circuit must be much higher. So you increase the frequency, you get higher max current. I naught increases. You decrease the frequency, the, uh, the current I naught decreases. And we can look at this purely based on logic. And this agrees with the equation that we derived in the previous video. We derived this expression, and notice in this expression, you see that if the omega increases, which represents the frequency, the maximum current increases. So it's now starting to make sense. And you can think about why, if you increase the capacitance, then also the maximum current increases. I leave that to you. But I just wanted to show you how these equations can start making sense if you deeply start thinking about what's going on inside. So moral of the story, why does the current lead the voltage in a capacitor? Because to change the voltage of the capacitor, you need to first charge it or discharge it. And to charge it or discharge it, you need to first run a current. So current has to lead the voltage.